What's up everybody, it's your boy SuperJ, and today we have a different type of video. There won't be no the usual gameplay today, instead, I want to make this video to honor the man and the legend. The reason I even go by the name of SuperJ, Akira Toriyama. For those of you who don't know, Akira Toriyama is mainly known as a creator of the Dragon Ball series, but he has also created and worked on many other projects such as Dr. Slum, Sandland, and Chrono Trigger, just to name a few. And it was announced to the public on March 7th that he has passed that he had passed away on March 1st due to acute subdural hematoma, which is, from what I found online, a cloud of blood that develops on the brain from a traumatic brain injury. I had initially debated as to whether or not I should make a video about Toriyama Sensei's passing, but I feel like this is the least I can do to repay him for everything he has done for me and his millions of fans around the world. As I said before, the reason I even go by the name Super J is because of Dragon Ball and it's based on the Super Saiyan transformation in the show. In fact, prior to the name Super J, my gamer tag has always been Son Javier, in reference to Son Goku. I had originally started to record this video a few weeks ago without having anything written down because I wanted to be as genuine as possible, but I was unable to properly But I wasn't able to properly gather my thoughts, so today I've prepared some notes just to make it easier for me to properly express how I how thankful I am for the work Toriyama Sensei has created. I remember when I first found out about his death, I had just gone home from work. I was sat down at my desk and was scrolling through Twitter when I saw the news. I didn't want to believe that first, but when I saw all the Dragon Ball YouTubers posting about it, and then I read the official statement, I just sat there shocked. Prior to learning about his death, I was having a good day. It had been a while since I felt like that. Most of my days aren't good or bad, just normal routine days of going to work as usual, but that day I felt good and then all of a sudden it went to shit when I heard the news. I remember that I didn't cry in the moment, because I didn't want to worry my family, but that night I did shed some tears, as well as the next few days. The last time I had ever cried for a non-family death was back in 2017 when Chester Bennington passed. I remember his death had me down for a couple of days, but Toriyama sent his death hit a lot harder. But enough about me crying, after all, I don't want this to be a sad video, instead I want to celebrate and honor Toriyama Sensei and speak briefly on how he has impacted my life. And while I talk, I'll also be showing some pictures of my personal collection of Dragon Ball items and merchandise that I own. Like millions of other fans around the world, I first came across Dragon Ball through Dragon Ball Seikai. I vividly remember, watch I vividly remember watching it on Saturday mornings. I believe it was on channel PIX11 but I couldn't verify that. I do remember though that I would air right before or after Yu-Gi-Oh and how I hated going to Catholic school because I was forced to leave in the middle of watching an episode. I also remember the first Dragon Ball game I ever played was Dragon Ball Shin Budokai on a PlayStation Portable. And actually, I still have my original copy. I remember having so much fun playing through the story mode and playing with as all the different characters, especially since at the time, I don't think I had ever watched any of the movies. I'm sure that I had heard of characters such as Gogeta and Brawly, but at the time, the only access I had to Dragon Ball was through watching it on Saturday mornings. It wasn't until YouTube was starting to grow that I was able to watch AMVs and parts of Dragon Ball that I had never seen before. One of my personal favorite Dragon Ball AMVs was from a channel called Let's Be Epic. It was the AMV of the Cell Saga when Gohan and Cell are going back and forth with their Hamehameha beam struggle. And that music in the background was so good. The original Let's Be Epic channel isn't around anymore, but you can still watch the video on YouTube. I'm sure to leave a link in the description so you guys can watch it and enjoy it for yourselves. Another great memory of Dragon Ball is when I went to Mexico for the first time. When my cousin and I bought a bootleg DVD which contained the whole Dragon Ball GT series, and we pulled an all-nighter watching the entire DVD from start to finish. Yes, I know it's GT, and I know how Jew Dragon Ball fans feel about it, but it's still Dragon Ball, and it's the only thing I had access to at the time and I enjoyed every moment of it. But of course, nothing will ever beat watching the Tournament of Power Saga air live every week, especially at its peak when everyone around the world held massive watch parties to see who would win between Goku and Jiren. One last Dragon Ball memory I want to mention is watching Dragon Ball Super in the movie theaters. I remember I was so excited I paid for all my cousins and brothers to go watch it with me, and even though most of them don't watch Dragon Ball, they all enjoyed it and thought it was cool. One of them, who wasn't even supposed to come but decided to make it last second, said that it was the best movie he had ever seen, and I might agree it was up there. But 
Besides the show being cool and full of action, one of the main reasons I, and I'm sure many of the other fans of Dragon Ball can agree on, is that we love the show because of the lessons it teaches. Lessons such as never giving up, working hard to overcome obstacles, facing your fears, breaking past your limits, and many many more. I know that Dragon Ball isn't the only place to learn these lessons from, but Dragon Ball portrayed them in a way that made them easier for millions to understand and to relate to. Hence why many people view Akira Toriyama as a father figure and teacher. Even I, who was lucky enough to have both parents in my life who I love, view him as a father figure. Not because my father was a bad father, but because through his work he was able to teach me valuable life lessons that my father never taught me, or if my father did teach me them, Dragon Ball helped cement them. I know it may sound cringe or cliche, but I would not be the man today if it wasn't for Akira Toriyama and Dragon Ball. Let's also not forget the people he has and will continue to inspire through his work. Hundreds of mangaka, thousands of artists, millions of gym rats, and many more. To put it into perspective, Akira Toriyama is to anime what Chester Bennington is to rock, what Kobe Bryant is to basketball, and this will might have some people, but what Michael Jackson is to music. I just recently learned that Akira Toriyama didn't start drawing until he was 23 years old, and that really inspires me since I am currently 23 years old. It gives me hope that someday I may be able to create something that can leave even the smallest fraction of an impact that he did. And although Toriyama Sensei is no longer with us, and the future Dragon Ball is uncertain, his legacy will continue and his works will not be forgotten. Thank you Akira Toriyama for everything, and as the creator of One Piece, Ichiro Odoa said, May heaven be as joyous as he envisioned it.